Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this particular video, we are going to talk about how to set up a Kubernetes cluster, right? So let's understand basically what all steps we need to do uh, to set up a Kubernetes cluster. So here we are going to use one tool called as a kind, okay? This is the tool that we are going to use it to create set up a Kubernetes cluster. Now, you'll find a lot of different tools available in the market to set up a Kubernetes cluster, right? But it's not necessary that, uh, that means whatever uh, steps we are using it to set up the Kubernetes cluster, after that, whatever we are going to do it with the Kubernetes cluster, that will remain safe. Okay, so it's up to us, up to our feasibility, the available environment, we can choose what kind of environment, uh, what kind of a tool we can use it to set up any kind of environment, right? Now, why we uh, are in the industry nowadays, almost 80% uh, of the time we end up using a kind cluster. Now, why that is the case? So first of all, let's understand what is this kind and why it is so popular, right? So basically this kind means it's a Kubernetes, Kubernetes inside Docker, okay? It's a Kubernetes inside Docker. Now, why we call it as a Kubernetes inside Docker? Because basically with the help of this kind tool, we can create a multi-node cluster on a single machine, okay? So if you have one machine, on this machine, we can create a multi-node cluster. Now, how it is possible? So basically, with a kind, we can achieve it. So what this kind tool is done, okay, what uh, kind tool does is basically for that we need to provide one configuration file as an input, okay, and in that config file, okay, in that config file we need to specify that, okay, I need one master node, right, so about the Kubernetes architecture we have discussed in the previous video, so in this config file we need to specify that how many master you required, Okay, and then basically we need to define the roles. Okay, so where we'll define like, okay, uh, we'll have a master role and then depending on how many workers we require, those many worker roles we can define. And when this file, we give the input to the kind utility, what it does, first of all, it will create those many containers. Okay, it will create those many containers. Let's say in we want a three node cluster. So it will first of all create three containers. Now we know that to create a container, we need an image, okay? So what Kubernetes community has done is they have created an image, okay? They have an image and inside that image, they have all the necessary components to set up a Kubernetes cluster. Like for example, uh, to set up a uh, cluster, we required a kubeadm, then we required a kubelet. Now what is kubelet, what is docker, what is kubeadm, all these tools we already discussed in the previous video, okay? So basically these are components of your Kubernetes cluster. Docker, all these tools are already a part of this particular image, okay? And from this image, we are readily just creating this containers, okay? And then as soon as this three containers created, depending on this configuration, what this kind utility does, it will automatically create a run and kubeadm init command on one of the container, and then when this command is successful, okay, we'll get in a join command and that join command will also be added by the, uh, this kind of utility will run that join command on all other containers. And that's how the Kubernetes cluster will be ready. Okay, that's how the Kubernetes cluster will be ready on a single machine. Now, as to create this kind cluster, it will hardly take around one minute. Okay, even a destroy that will happen in just a milliseconds, right? So nowadays, Whenever you have any application, if you just wanted to deploy it on a cluster and test it, this kind cluster, with the help of this kind cluster, developers on their own machine, they can quickly create a kind cluster and then they can deploy the application and test it, whether that's running as expected or not. Okay, maybe just to run at unit test cases. Similarly, if the testing team wants to uh, do some more test cases, okay, they can also on their system, they can just set up a kind cluster, they, uh, they can deploy their application and test it, right? And nowadays we we are already talking about the DevOps. Okay, it's a new trend. Okay, where a lot of people, a lot of uh, software development lifecycle, we are automating with the help of continuous integration and deployment. Right, in a continuous integration deployment as well, 
we need a lot of small, small environment where we can deploy the microservices, we can uh, run a test cases, right? So that all you can achieve it with a kind, okay? We need your pipeline, you can just quickly create and one of the machine you can quickly create an insta uh, Kubernetes cluster, deploy the application, test it, and you are done, okay? You can just quickly destroy that cluster as well, okay? So that's the reason nowadays, this kind cluster is very, very popular, okay? And everyone should be knowing about it, how to set up that cluster, okay? So it's a very simple to set up. Uh, basically, what we need to do is, we need to uh, have this one configuration file. In this configuration will uh, uh, file, will just define the roles, okay, what all required. And then by using a kind utility, we'll run kind create cluster command, which will on your host machine, it will just create those many containers. For that containers, whatever image is required that is already available on the Kubernetes repo. We just need to get that image. It will just simply create a container internally inside on one of the container. It will run the QVDM init command. And then once that is successful, it will go and run the join command on remaining container. And that's it. Our cluster will be ready. Once cluster is ready, what we can do is basically on the host machine, we can just install a kubectl utility, right? We know that kubectl utility is used to interact with a components available on the master node, right? On the master node, we'll have an API server, your uh, ETCD, your controller, your uh, scheduler, all these components will be there on the master node. And basically, whenever this cluster setup happens, this master node components will be initialized. And to interact with that, we need to just, uh, just specify the kubectl utility on the host machine, and that will interact with the API server and we'll be able to access the cluster, right? So that's how simply we can create it. So let's see this practically, how we can do it. So what I, I'll do is, uh, basically I have one EC2 instance, I'm already connected to that, okay? So on this EC2 instance, we'll basically create a kind cluster, and then maybe we can just simply deploy, we'll just simply deploy our one sample application on that kind cluster, okay? Now, first of all, to have a kind cluster, the basic requirement we have is, because now we are going to create a containers, and those containers are going to work as a Kubernetes nodes. Right. So now to create this container, the requirement is we need to have a Docker image. So sorry, the Docker utility, we need to have it. Okay. Once we have that utility, it can pull the image and then start the container. Right. So let me install the Docker. So you, if it is there or not, you can just simply type a Docker and check if it is available there or not. Right. So it's not available. And this is Ubuntu machine. So simply I'll just run this command and we'll try to install the Docker. So it's saying that, okay, this package is not there. So we can use the apt update command first once ever do we do the apt update we'll get that package and then we can go back and run the apt install uh, docker.io okay and once that is done we should have the docker installs right so apt update is done now let me try to install okay you can see this time it is able to find that uh, docker package and now it's simply installing it okay once installation is done the next step that we'll do is basically we have to install a kind utility. We need to install the kubectl. Then we need to define the configuration file, okay? So let this finish the installation of the Docker and then we'll step-by-step step do a further step, okay? So Docker installation is done. Now what next is we'll do the kind installation. So I have the steps available on my Git repo to install the kind, I'll just simply use this, okay? So these are the basically, this commands are just downloading one kind utility, changing the permission and moving it to the public uh, path, okay, that is user local bin. So let me just copy this. Simply we can try to run it. Okay, you can see now we have the kind utility, okay, it is showing the option. Similarly, let's install the kubectl. Again, here as well, we are just downloading the binary, changing the permission and then moving it to the location. Okay, so let's run it. So right now download is happening. Once download is done, we are just simply moving, okay, and now we have a kubectl as well, right? Perfect, so we have all the necessary tools now. Now what we need is we need a config file where we can define, okay, how many master, how many worker node, right? So let's go back and again, this is the sample template, how we can define the configuration, right? So let me just put it here. So here you can see this is a sample configuration where we are defining that, okay, we'll need a one master node. This control plane is nothing but a master node. And then we we need a two worker node. That's what we have specified, right? So this is how your configuration file will look like. Now let me just save this file and now we need to run the command kind create cluster. Okay. And then we can use hyphen hyphen config option and then give this config file as a path. Okay. I have this file directly in the current directory. So I'm using directly a file name, but if you have somewhere else, you can just give the relative or a complete path. Okay. So let's run it. 
So now, first of all, you can see it is pulling the image, right? The first thing that it will do is it will pull the Docker image. From that image, it will create the nodes. Now we have defined that three nodes we required, one master and two worker. So it will pull the image and it will create three containers, okay? So let's wait for it. First of all, it is now pulling the image. So the image required for this is around uh, one GB. Okay, so that's what it is pulling it now. So it should be done. And once image is pulled, you can see now it is saying preparing nodes and three boxes, okay? Those three boxes represent that the, it is creating a three containers, okay? Now once three containers are created, what next it will do is basically on one of the container, it will start the control plane. That means it will start the init command, okay? Which will internally initialize all your master node components like the API server, ATCD, controller, scheduler, okay? All these utilities, uh, basically the master node components, it will initialize. And once those are initialized, it will set up all the necessary, the networks and all stuff. And then we'll get a, a message that, okay, your uh, cluster setup is completely, uh, basically though at the end, it will give you the one, some join command and automatically it will run that join command on other containers as well. Okay, and finally we'll get a message that your cluster is ready to use it, right? So still we are getting a message that it's a preparing the nodes. Okay, now it is saying the writing configuration. Now it is saying I'm starting a control means, a control plane means on the master node, whatever the components we have like API server, ETCD, controller, scheduler, it is just starting that, okay? Now, once it is started successful, it will just join the worker node. Okay, now the CNI plugin means it's a networking component it is initializing. And then finally, it is saying that joining worker node. And once worker node joining means it will go to the other two containers and then it will run this join command. And then now we should get a message that your uh, cluster setup is successfully done. Okay, now we are doing it for the first time. So it took some time to download that image, right? If you have the, if you want to do it and again and again, so that image will be available locally. So your cluster will get created even uh, less than the, the time it took now, okay? So still joining the worker node. So it should be finished right now. Yeah, it's it's done, right? So to access the cluster, we can simply use kubectl get nodes, okay? So you can see three nodes are there. It's showing one node not ready, but it should be ready now, yeah. So let's understand how it has created. So first of all, you can do if if I run the Docker PS command, you can see three containers it has created. Now these three containers are running as a your Kubernetes nodes. Okay. And that's what we can access by using a kubectl. It is able to list out all these nodes. Right. So how how uh, this kubectl understand that I need to connect to this uh, cluster? First of all, you can see your api server runs on 6443 port so that is that particular port is binded to 42655 that's a host machine port right we have already seen in the docker that why we need to bind the container port to your host machine because we want to access it right so that's already done and this particular configuration the port and where it is running and all those are basically automatically stored under home directory okay there is a dot q folder gets created and inside that a config file will be there okay and inside this config file you can see this is the cluster details, okay? This is a cluster certificate and where this cluster is running, okay? By using this information, your kubectl utility will interact with the cluster, okay? Now, what I'll do, I'll just deploy the one sample application on the, uh, sample application on the, uh, your, your Kubernetes cluster, okay? So now for that, I'll use the Nginx image, which is publicly available on the Docker Hub. So how to create the pod for that? Okay, pod is basically a logical object we have in Kubernetes, which we can use it to deploy our microservices, right? So how to do that? I'll just simply use an imperative command, okay? Uh, in more detail about how to write the pod YAML, then how to create the pod from that YAML. That's something we'll cover it in another video. But in this video, I'll just simply create by using an imperative command, I'll create a pod object and I'll make it run, okay? So let me do kubectl run command, we use it, okay? kubectl run and we'll give the container name as a, let's say nginx and the image for this, I'm going to use it as a nginx again, okay? Let's say latest. So this is the image available on the Docker Hub. I'm using it directly. And then if I just use the hyphen hyphen port, which runs on the 80, okay? So let me run it. You can see it's a pod got created. Now to access the pod, we can use a kubectl get pod, okay? And it's container creating. 
Now on which node it is running, if you want to see, you can use a hypernova wide with the same command, right? So now you can see it's in a running state. It got this particular IP and it's running on the kind worker node. Okay, if you see, we have three nodes, right? So out of this, it is running on this kind worker. Okay. Now we, we already talked about how the scheduling happens and all. Okay. So we'll not talk about it again. You can just refer the previous video. So this is how simply you can set up a cluster by using a kind and then we can deploy our sample, sample application. Now Kubernetes provides a lot of other objects like pod, deployment, co config map, secret. So we'll cover all those objects one by one in a separate video. Okay. So I hope uh, for now everyone understood how to set up a cluster. It's a very simple, straightforward procedure. Uh, so if you have any question, please put your comment in a comment section. Okay. So I hope everyone liked this video. If you have not subscribed channel yet, please do subscribe. So thanks everyone.